welcome back. If your test results regarding your relationship are great, then congratulations. If not, if you received poor test results, then that may indicate that uh, at least one of you doesn't know what kind of partner, what kind of spouse they really want. So they just drift along, not really knowing whom to get married to. That causes a lack of commitment, which makes the relationship unable to work. One sign of the lack of commitment is having too long an engagement, which may take up to years. Another one is the I don't want to have children type of thinking. You see, that's when one of you or, or both parties get from the other something they need, some attention, sex, material well-being, care, comfort, but that's all. That's the level of the relationship. It doesn't get any closer or stronger. And for a while, this may be fine for people who are satisfied with that, but at the same time, they are still looking for the right person, even though they can't figure out exactly what that person should be like. That's when imperfect people want a perfect spouse. So if you live in such an uncommitted relationship, then one of you or both of you are really ready to break off the relationship at any time. But is that what you want? Is that enough for you? If you are doing this training, then we can assume that's not the way you would like to live in your marriage. So what should you do if you are not married yet, but if you are taking this whole issue of marriage very seriously and um, definitely would like to get married one day and to live in a committed, developing, blessed, God-given marriage? Firstly, you have to become the trustable, reliable, responsible and loving, caring person who is seeking God's will and whom someone would be happy to get married to and stay committed to. And of course, the more clearly you know what kind of partner, what kind of a spouse you are looking for, the sooner and more decisively you will act if you manage to find them. But without having a firm idea of what kind of a spouse we want, we won't recognize them, even if they are right next to us. And we could therefore miss the greatest opportunity of our life. So what can we do to avoid this? Your first and foremost thing to do is, obviously, pray for God's guidance in that matter. So why is that the first step? Because without God's guidance, we humans can be painfully wrong and utterly deceived. Just as Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing, nothing. The next helpful thing you can do is to write a list. So let's put into words as precisely and with as much detail as you possibly can, what values, behaviors, attitudes to life, what personality traits, interests and so on you would find to be the best and the most ideal match for you and it's good to be fully aware of this and to keep these points in mind when looking for a spouse and when you get married or if you are already married please don't expect your marriage to work without having disagreements and arguments that's just the normal part of family life Despite our best intentions, problems and crises can occur, and they surely will, <laughs> even in consciously well-maintained relationships. So please understand that honestly revealing, managing and jointly solving our problems can only strengthen and deepen our relationship and not destroy it. Solving every problem we can and learning to handle our conflicts and our life's crises will only bring us closer to each other. It serves to further polish our relationship like a diamond, 
making it even brighter and purer. So it's crucial to learn how to solve your problems together constructively and effectively in a way that is in line with God's will. How? Let's see it in our next video. Please watch it. Holy name.